Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the 223rd session of the online Optum Learning Series OLS. And this is the first session of the year 2024. So I would like to take this opportunity to wish everybody a very happy new year. And I wish that uh, this year is fruitful in all of your endeavors, what you want to take in the upcoming future. Uh, so for today's session, we have with us uh, Dr. Patricia Flores from Chile. Dr. Patricia has the Doctor of Optometry degree from the University of Madrid in Spain. She is well accomplished, I would say. She is into a couple of private practices, so she sees patients. She is also in uh, industry. She is the professional service in the specialty lens division from Manicon limited Japan and also she has been into academia and she is currently also teaching in Latin America in a couple of universities. She is a fellow of the Scleral Lens Education Society and also serves as board member for various uh, organizations, couple of which are the International Scleral Lenses, the Global Ophthalmic Movement, which is GLOW, and she spends a lot of time educating optometrists in Latin America as well as uh, globally. And uh, today with that experience, Dr. Patricia is going to tell us uh, her views and her thoughts on using corneal topography and using it to our best advantage in enhancing our contact lens practice. So welcome Dr. Patricia uh, to the platform. Uh, let me just leave the screen time to you, please. Yeah. Hey, thank you very much for your invitation. I am really excited about this opportunity. Um, and also, I want to say you Happy New Year's. I wish this year was well in the different aspect in your life, love, health, family, and for sure work. So let me share with you my experience about how the corneal topography can enhance our specialty contact lens practice. Um, as Fak mentioned in this webinar, I have my practice in Chile, in Latin America, very, very far away from you, from Malaysia, from India, from the rest of Asia pay, uh, countries. But we have the same kind of patient. We have a different kind of patient who really needs a very optimal fit. So how the corneal topography can help us to try to ensure an optimal fit, to try to reduce the share time, uh, invest in our patient and try to get patient more happy. And this is the most challenges in our fittings. So I will share with you the first and all, I want to um, provide to you my conflicts of interest. I am Global Professional Service from a Specialty Lens Division at Manicon. Uh, however, uh, in this lecture, is, there not exists nothing related to a commercial perspective. This is, will be the agenda for today. First, I want to introduce you for a general topic and concept related to uh, why it's important to understanding the corneal power and shape for our fittings. The different kind of type of topography, a scale and map, where it's useful to use in corneal topography when we want to fit a patient with a specialty contact lens. We have a different kind of maps. However, not all of them are very useful in our contactology. And finally, about the tips, how to capture an optimal tomography image. It's essential to get a good a corneal topographer before to interpret the corneal topographer or the patient. And the second part of this my lecture, I want to share with you the application for corneal topography in contact lens. HVAD is very important to ensure an optimal fit. How the corneal topography help to get more success in the multifocal subcontact lenses. How the corneal topography help us to try to difference between a regular or irregular cornea, 
and also how to decide very quick time, in very short time, very quick decision about if in this kind of irregular patient, I need to use in my first option a corneal GP lens, GP lens, corneal design or scleral design. And finally, I want to share with you something related about the tear quality, the wetting of the subcontact lenses and how to get some analysis with them. So why is it important to understand about the corneal power and shape power? At the moment, it is still more standard use at the keratometry, like a basic device to try to get analysis about the shape of the cornea. However, we only take the three millimeters of the center of the cornea, and this is very poor information. Both eyes in the three millimeters are very similar. However, the corneal topography says, says something different because the cornea is not only the three millimeters, it's more than eight, nine, 10, almost 12 millimeters HBAD. So the corneal topography through the corneal power and shape provide more complete data collection and real collection data about how looks the corneal topography in my patients. Reduce the short time. That means if I reduce the time to fit my patient, I can use that time to improve my fit or maybe analyze another patient and reduce the patient discomfort. Why is that? Because if I try to get more analysis about the shape and the power of the complete of the cornea, that means I can decide the more precise contact lenses. The patient is happy, it's customized soft contact lenses or RPG lenses design, and also I can make my work in a, in, in a short time and not long time. Many years ago, we started with different kind of devices to try to get analysis about the corneal of my patients. The keratometry, three millimeters diameter, the information, photokeratoscopy, eight millimeters, video keratography, composite corneal topographer, some of that um, corneal topographers, for instance, Medmond, try to get composite capture and get more larger um, area to get a real um, information about the corneal topographer. So related about some tips before to interpret the corneal topography, I want to say the kind of a scale we decide to use is very important. It's not only to check about the colors in the corneal topography. It's very important to know about what kind of scale are they using and what kind of map are you using. About the scale, we can use a normalized scale to try to get more delimited information about the limited information about the extasia, about how um, how I can get more precise decision about where is the apex of the cornea. So in normalized scale is more precise, is only used to try to compare the same eyes to the same patients. Usually when we analyze a different kind of corneal topography, we frequently use absolute scale. That means the same scale with the same range of parameters, curvature from 100 diopter in steeped values to the flat values, nine diopter in a Tomei corneal topographer. However, this kind of a scale is not very precise. It's not a specific. I need to get the more information about the details in the shape of the cornea, how, how much is irregular and not interpolate the data. For this reason, 
we try to get different tools to try to give us the most specific information about this patient. In the same way, usually we analyze about the axial map. However, the axial map is not very precise because can unmask some irregularity in my patients and also give a impression about the extension. This patient is very huge. However, when we change the map to tangential map, we can observe about the extasia is inside the pupil and is a small diameter. So we can get more information about the position and the extension in a precise way compared to the axial map. And finally, I want to remember you about the elevation map is amazing tools because as you can see in the next slide in my lecture, it's possible to simulate how we expect will be the fit of the GP corneal lenses without put the GP lenses in the patient eye. Only we need to review and interpret the elevation map because the elevation map is, me, is my fluency pattern. We'll try to simulate how we'll look, how we'll expect to look the GP, GP corneal lenses. First of all, if I want to get a customized soft contact lenses in my feet, that means I need to base it, that fit in the corneal topography. So I have to be very sure about, I have an optimal topography image. If Vanderbilt, Randy Kojima and Dr. Lynette Jones give us some light highlight about how to get a very good capture. First, we need to check about is our devices have sufficient calibration or not. It depends if you use a placid corneal topographer, profilometry, or another kind of devices. All that devices are, are an optic devices, and that means they need to recalculate the calibration. It's better if we use a dark environment to try to have the more information about the extension of the pupil area. Simulate a natural eye blinking. In contact lens, it's very useful and very frequent to use corneal topographer where we project placid disc into the corneal of my patient. So that Placid need to be very clear because finally, when we get a corneal topography, we are not analyzing about the shape of the cornea. We are analyzing about the tear film over the cornea. It is not possible to get a very homogeneous distribution about the tear film over the anterior area in cornea, you can use some eye drops. You can decide to use some carmelosa or yalunatic sodic to try to get more homogeneous distribution about the tear film over cornea. Remember, it's necessary not only take one or two captors. We work very fast, so we can take one, two or three captors. In average, we need to define first about if we are in front of a regular or irregular cornea. So we need to check about the symmetry of our corneal topographer. Check about geometrical center maps. And also very, very important, more than when we try to customize our fitting in a subcontact lenses, scalar subcontact, scleral lenses or limbal GP contact lenses. We need to try to get more data, knowing the central area, 
get data in the peripheral area in the cornea. That means we need to say to our patient, please blink and open very hard your eyes and maintain open. Eyelids not open in this image, and that means if the corneal topographer provides data, it's not really true. It's interpolate data. Okay, so we reviewed about general topic related how to get an optimal capture, what kind of tools we can use in our corneal topography to be more precise in the interpretation when we interpret the corneal topography. That means not absolute scale, that means normalized scale, that means tangential mark is better than actual mark. So let's go to review some application of the corneal topography to ensure a success in our fittings. The first factor is HBAD size, implication on lens fitting. There exists a different way to measure about the HBAD. The traditional method methodology is the ruler, for sure, but less, less precise. A slim blank with some reticles to try to get information about how the extension of the HBAD in my patient. Loop, another option, and corneal topographer. There exists some reference in our evidence scientific data who were give the uh, information to us about when we compare it or comparison of manual and automatic method to determine the horizontal corneal diameter, we get a few, a huge difference between the manual method compared to the automatic method. In this table from this article, um, let us know about is more precise to use of scan your L master because it's more precise about the, the value provided about the HBAD compared to a manual method. So this is very important because we considering about the HBAD value in the initial lens design selection, increase the probability a lens fitting will be successful. All our patients don't have the same HBAD side. Patrick Caroline made a, a study uh, from Contamac um, partners to try to get information about how is the HBAD distribution in 300 eyes. As you can see here in yellow color bar, the yellow bar, the average is around 11.5 to 12.1 millimeters. However, not all our population fall in this part of the graphic. There is a patient with a small diameter, another patient with large diameter. We need to get information about how precise Precise how much we can't about the visual iris diameter because this factor HBAD is essential to get a customized contact lenses, design contact lenses. There exists some corneal topographer where include in the software the possibility to do some simulations about how we'll expect look at uh, contact lenses, GP contact lenses in that patient. So if I want to use this tool simulation from the corneal topographer about how we'll expect look the contact lenses, that means I need to make sure about I am taking the more precise HBAD size. As I mentioned before, Patrick Caroline, Professor Patrick Caroline mentioned about the average of HBAD is around 
11.6 to 12 millimeters. But only the 50% of the patient fall within this range of HVAD. And the extreme part of this Gaussian curve needs different kind of contact lenses, not traditional contact lenses, not retail contact lenses with one base curve and one diameter, or two base curve and one diameter. This, this extreme part of the Gaussian curve need a customized contact lenses. In this case, we, we can make sure about this fit is optimal if we get information about how is the precise value about the HBAD. And also with the corneal topography, get an idea, a very precise idea, how will look the simulation of the contact lenses. And as you can see here, it's very similar to the real fit with fluorescence pattern and the evaluation with our slim lamp. If we can get information about how to get the optimal diameter very quickly, if we are using a corneal topographer, that's made to reduce the shared time with your patient. Also improve the comfort. But no, not only in GP contact lenses, the soft contact lenses is essential to have the optimal diameter. And the diameter depends about the HBAD of my patients. If I have a small diameter in my contact lenses because I not take the precise measurement with my ruler, with some manual method, I only expect okay. excessive movement. Okay. As you can see here in a patient with this HBAD, the contact lenses is totally a small respect the iris of my patients. So excessive movement, the contact lenses touch in the limbal area, the patient feel that and it's not comfortable and not stable visions. But also, if we take an incorrect value about the HVAD and take the decision to have a large diameter compared to the optimal we need, we still have problems. Please take a look in the first video in the middle of this slide, a patient with a base curve eight millimeters and diameter 14.50. As you can see here, there exists some movement of the contact lenses, okay? And sometimes it's very usually, usually hear from some ECPs about if we increase the diameter in the soft contact lenses, always we expect a steep defeat and reduce the movement. However, not only, not always is that correct. This is the same patient with the same base curve, the same ground of contact lenses, but with a larger diameter, 15.50. As you can see here, the patient blink when he look up and there exists more movement. That's me. I want you let you know about with this slide is very important to get the precise HVAD to take the right decision about the diameter, not only for your GP contact lenses, also for your soft contact lenses. So the first topic application was the HVAD. Second application, how the corneal topography help us in our multifocal soft contact lenses design. design. There exists two different kind of design in multifocal soft contact lenses, in the retail, in the genetic, traditional contact lenses. And we know about 
we expect to be presbyopic in all the population. I have 42 and I start to have some problems in near vision, <laughs> and unfortunately, but this is a reality. So if we know about all the population we expect to be presbyopic, why there is not exist a huge market in a multifocal soft contact lens fitting around the globe? For instance, in Latin America, only the 3% of the cells of soft contact lenses are multifocal soft contact lenses. And this is rare. One of the reasons is because the multifocal soft contact lenses are more complex, are more complex to fit. We not only need information about the refraction, we need information about the dominance. We need information about um, the pupil side. We need information about the profile curves in our design. Require more time, invest from the professional, require more education from the specialist. One of the topic I read a few years ago from related about how important is the centration about the multifocal soft contact lens in our fitting. Stephanie Randas made a, a very beautiful research related about this topic. And they found about when we have a corneal topography in a naked eye, and then we fit a multifocal soft contact lenses, and then we create a differential map, as you can see here, where I show you with my mouse, you have to be sure about when the visual axis point provide from the center of the eye and the center of the multifocal contact lenses where it came from this ring, when this difference, distant difference is less than 1.25 millimeters, we expect a good centration and we expect to improve the quality of vision in my patient. And they mention about there are not overlapping letters. Some patients tell us about, I have less of 3D effect. I don't have a double letters and reduce the allo. So, Sometimes it's very obvious about to try to get information if my soft contact lenses is the center or not. However, sometimes it's not easy to see that. In that case, the corneal topography is more precise and we can get that information to compare the visual axis point compared with the center of our multifocal soft contact lenses. Here is an example, a patient presbyopic who was fit with a, the same brand of contact lenses, two, sorry, two different brand of contact lenses in the same eye. In this part, in my left side, as you can see here, there exists a value more than 1.25, 1.28. In the second round, I reduce the distance from this both point. And this kind of patient in my practice, in my clinical experience, the patient demonstrate to be feel more comfortable with this kind of brand where we get better centration. So HBAD, done. Multifocal subcontact lenses, the centration is important and the corneal topography can help us to get information about that. About the corneal astigmatism. This is a, a, um, a slide I uh, get from Randy Kojima. 
And it's so beautiful because if I show you these both pictures and then I ask you about which eye is the hardest to fit, typically the answer from the ECP is the image from my right is more difficult because there exists a huge corneal astigmatism value, 1.80, compared to my left, only 0.88 diopters. However, this is only the information in the three millimeters area in our cornea. The same patient with the corneal topography show me I am wrong because it's true in the central area, this is a huge astigmatism compared to the left side. However, in the left side, there exists an astigmatism from limbal to limbus, an asymmetric. In the right side is more apical, astigmatic, and symmetric. So now I demonstrate to you about we can get a wrong decision about how looks this corneal astigmatism in my patient. The astigmatism to limbus to limbus compared to the flat meridian to a steep meridian is 32 microns. In my right side, the difference between both meridians is 27 microns. That means this kind of patient is more easy to fit. Corneal where we have a same corneal cylinder. However, the extension out of three millimeters of measurement is totally different. That means in that case, I can fit and regular GP contact lenses, toric GP contact lenses. However, in my right side, in similar corneal astigmatism, I need a, a specialty GP contact lenses because this patient have an extasia. But what about the corneal shape and the scleral shape? corneal toricity and scleral toricity. We know about the corneal toricity have some relation with the scleral toricity. However, it's not the same, but it's very similar. More than when we have a corneal toricity, more than two diopters. So if we have a more than two diopters, the corneal toricity, we expect to be sure the scleral toricity also exists and in similar direction compared to the corneal shape and the corneal toricity. There is a profilometry where we have information out the limbus from this black line. And as you can see here, the toricity start into the limbus and extend along to the sclera conjunctiva. That means this kind of tools, when we get information not of the central area, more close to the limbals, that information close to the limbals give us information how we expect to look the sclera toricity in my patient. And that give us the possibility to get the right decision to get a peripheral toric in my scleral contact lens design. For this reason, the peripheral measurement is very important to get if you have a corneal topographer. You can try to ask your manufacturer about the next device, do you want to buy it? like at corner topography with simulation of contact lenses, but also more important, try to get a corneal topography with a larger extension of area to get the real data about how look 
the central shape and peripheral shape more close to the nipples. The tonicity of the landing zone that extend into the limbal region can improve the complete limbal port in our scleral contact lenses. So we go more in deep and we try to get some, some tips related about when I have a patient with irregular cornea, how can I get a quick decision about if I need a corneal GP lenses or a scleral GP lenses. It's so generous, the elevation map, because the elevation map, as I mentioned in previous slide, give us the information about how we expect look at GP corneal design. As you can see here in the top, is an elevation map in a patient with postgraph. In the bottom is the same patient with postgraph and with fit fitted uh, GP contact lenses. To my right, you can see here, see the cornea and in a yellow line, the best fit spherical from the cornea topographer. As you can see here, there exist some areas where the cornea, the patient, the patient cornea is behind the best fit spheric from the corneal topography. There exists a space. That means I expect more fluorescing behind the lenses in the depression area in the elevation map. In an opposite way, when I have a height elevation in the corner of my patient, I expect a touch of our contact lenses to the cornea. So our elevation map is our chronicity pattern when we analyze corneal GP lenses. And Randy Kojima and Pat Caroline provide a beautiful tips. You have to get your elevation map try to get an optimal capture, try to get um, peripheral measurement in your, corneal, in your corneal exam. And then you need to use not only your tangential map, you need to use your elevation map and go with your mouse, try to define the greater depression point and the greater elevation point and the difference between that point is less 350 microns, we are sure about in that patient, you will be get the success with a corneal GP lenses. How precise is this methodology? They found about this rule when the difference between the depression and elevation point is less than 350 microns, they get an 88% of success with GP contact lenses, corneal contact lenses. However, when we have a patient when, where the corneal elevation difference between the depression point and the highest point of the cornea is more than 350 microns, not play with a corneal GP lenses, you need to go directly to a scleral contact lenses. And for sure, these kind of tips reduce the short time with your patient. Let's take a look at our example. This is a patient from my clinic. It's a patient who has keratoconus. He, he is very happy with his feet. It's a corneal contact lenses. But when I try to analyze that tip provide from Randy and Pat Caroline, I start to play with my mouse and I found the difference between both point is 340 microns. Take a look about how look the elevation map. And this is my patient. And now take a look about 
how is the frequency pattern of this patient? Was beautiful the fit in this patient when the difference between bow point depression and elevation is less than 350 micros in my elevation map? Another kind of patient. He also had a tasia. However, the difference between both point, the depression, and more elevated point is more than 350 microns. In this case, it was 690 microns. The simulation from the Medmon tried to play with a GP contact lenses was not good, as you can see here. And then to try to get more information, I put the contact lenses, corneal GP contact lenses, and it's not optimal. There is this place where it's too flat, too steep, bubbles, touch, excessive movement. And so have right these tips provided from Randy and Pat Caroline about when we get a difference more than 350 microns, we can't lose our time to try to fit a corneal GP lenses and go directly to a scleral contact lenses. I hope that tips is good for you too. And finally, take a look about how the corneal topography help us to try to get more information about the tear film quality. We know about there exists a different kind of methodology to try to get the quality of tear film in my patient. Patients who have a few value, a low value about the boot, um, give us the idea about that patient is very frequent to expect dry eye symptoms. However, if the patient have a good tear quality, we expect no any symptomatology related to dry eye or contact lens discomfort. So there is these two kinds of methodology to measurement the tear quality. The traditional methodology is tear break, break up time. That means I put fluorescein, I use in my slim lamp the blue light and yellow filter, and request to my patient to blink and open his eyes and maintain open and start to get information about, about when I start the black area over my cornea. That means no tear film in that area in cornea. The tear breakup time is the traditional methodology, but there is another kind of methodology, the tear film surface quality assessment. This kind of automatic methodology provide us information about the tear quality without the necessity to use fluorescein. So let's compare about two methodologies. Is true the tear breakup time is cheaper compared to this not invasive method because you need to buy some topographer, keratograph 5M, for example. Invasive method, tear, tear breakup time, needs Florence installation and this causes the tear desestabilization because in the past discovered about the Florence can change the pH in my tear field. So the non-invasive method doesn't require Florence so that means the measurement is more precise. The tear breakup time provides a poor repeatability because depends on the examiner. 
the non-invasive method not depends about the professional. It's an automatic measurement, so more precise. And the result provide information to us about the sensibility and specificity. And there exists some evidence, as you can see in the reference of this slide, to tell us about the sensibility and specificity is better in these automatic devices compared to the traditional methodology that tear break up time. Right now, the views to get into the nomograms to define dry eye in our patient to use not invasive method more than the tear break up time. But not only to try to define dry eye patients, these kind of tools help us to get information about how the wetting of the our soft contact lenses. We know about the soft contact lenses, the different kind of brown, and also the same contact lenses with different kind of techniques not provide the same wetting value. And the majority of the brand not share <laughs> the, the wetting value with excessive drop or when help me techniques. So there exists different kind of wetting value and we need to know about which is better. Because if we don't have a good surface wetting, we expect problems, reduce the quality of vision, reduce the lens wear time, and the patient is not happy. However, something is very important to emphasize is the wetting of the some contact lenses didn't demonstrate to be related to the comfort to feel more the lenses. The wetting of the soft contact lenses demonstrate to have relation about the visual comfort. Is a visual comfort good or bad? So if the wetting of the soft contact lenses is important to make sure a good vision and a stable vision in my patient and, and get a, a more happy patients, so we can use the corneal topographer to with the contact lenses, make this exam, not invasive method, and see how is the distribution of the tear film over the soft contact lenses. And if it's not good, take some actions. Maybe use a different brand of contact lenses, or maybe use the same brand, but different eye drops. Which, which eye drop will be better? the eye drops who maintain for more time in the eye of the patients. In this slide, Randy Kojima explained about brand one, brand two, same patients. And with the time, with the brown one, there exists a poor wetting over the soft contact lenses. However, with the second brand of contact lenses, this is improved a lot. That means I get the same vision. However, the weighting of the soft contact lenses is better in the second case. That means that run will be my first option for that patient. So in summary, the corneal topography is one of the most important tools in your practice as a professional of the contact lens. Understanding the power and shape of the cornea and the application will help you to increase your efficiency to fit and customize contact lenses, soft contact lenses and GP lenses. Additional application in most modern topography machines adds to the usables of this instrument. I hope this kind of lecture provide to you for some of you don't have yet a corneal topography to get the decision to invest in this technology 
because if you work with that and you work in a very um with your heart to try to get beneficial fit you can do that in a very quick time and finally that help to you to make some differ differentiation with the rest of your professionals and also most important provide a better service for our patients so thank you very much um, for your attention i am not apologize for my english it's not my first language and i am happy to answer you any question if you have thank you so much uh, dr patricia i think uh, it went wonderful so uh, you don't need to apologize i guess we did understand everything very clearly and you went slowly so that we could also take up the uh, the understanding so thank you so much for sharing uh, all of that expertise with us thank you yeah. okay great so while there are some questions coming in dr patricia there was one question uh, uh, which was uh, kind of connected to the summary point which you said that uh, people who want to get a corneal topography that's something which is good to have it in practice right so do you have any recommendation of which corneal topography do you prefer the placido disc topography or do you prefer the shine flag one which one do you think is better for for us as contact lens specialists i think we have to be sure about when in my country for instance i don't get the possibility to diagnose a patient with keratoconus for example for example so my work here is try to design the more precise contact lenses if that is my task only i need a placid this corneal topographer and this is enough so i suggest to you if you have the same task compare me to try to decide the customized contact lenses and not diagnose the pathology so the the placid disc is enough right yeah so i think uh, it is more important of what you want to achieve and what you want what type of patient you have uh, you know in your in your area or in your practice which you're going to look at with help so thank you so much for uh, giving the advice uh you did mention about the use of elevation map a lot so you you want to use elevation map to look at the choice of lens uh any idea on decision about soft versus gp lenses how do we decide based on elevation map do you think that helps at the moment maybe i am wrong however i not read nothing related about the elevation i provide information about how look the soft contact lenses however for me makes sense because the gp contact lenses um, only need information about the corneal shape and the soft contact lenses the landing area is in scleral and conjunctiva where the corneal topography not provide to you any information so uh, at the moment I didn't see any reference related to that. However, I can make sure and show you part deep about to try to differentiate about the corneal GP lenses and scleral contact lenses is very precise. Yeah, yeah, right. Because I think more of the soft lens kind of takes the shape. The RGP lens is floating on the tear flame. So probably some more uh, work needs to be done to see how this can be used for our soft lens as well more efficiently yeah different thing is we use a profilometry like eglit because we have a real data about how is the sagita and the shape and the power in the scleral area but in the corneal topography no and this is a very um, important point when we get decision about what kind of fit do you want to do? Do you want to do more GP corneal design, more efficient or to keratology and GP contact lenses, corneal lenses for irregular cornea? Or do you want to focus 
only in scleral contact lenses or soft contact lenses. Maybe the corneal topography is not enough. You need a profilometry to try to get the real data. The most important thing is which device provide to me the real data and not interpolation. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think the, the way you explain the important steps to capture also plays a very important role. So the, the best image you capture, the more real data you have and use that for your advantage, right? Okay, uh, one more question. I think this is related to the tear flame, the use of topography to, you know, kind of look at the tear quality. In many places, people don't have, you know, topographers. So do you still advise people to do with the invasive method? Or do you think they can do something else instead of using fluorescein? No, not, it's not mandatory. It's not mandatory. However, from my point of view, I work very close with ophthalmologists. And the ophthalmologists to try to get and define dry eye diagnosis, they need to evaluate the tear film quality. And they know it's more efficient my device compared to the tear breakup time. So how in my relation with the this multidisciplinary group with the corneologist, I think is essential if they want to diagnose dry eye. However, for my contactology, also is a very good tool. It's not essential, but it's very good tool because when I found a patient who is not happy with his feet and I say, why? because I decide the correct parameters, the patient have a good vision, the length is centered, why the patient is not happy. I have the possibility to evaluate the wetting over the contact lenses and decide if the problem is the distribution, the tear field or not. This kind of color scale in the not invasive method is very visual, not only for me, for the patient. Explaining. Because the patient, when I explain that with color, the patient say, ah, okay, you have a right. But with our slim lamp, it's more difficult to try to explain the patient what happened here and why he has to invest to another brand of contact lenses or more eye drops in his eyes. Yeah, yeah, that's very important. I think uh, patient education, it makes life easy to explain. And then the beautiful colors, the red comes out that, yeah, you can show the tear film is break. So it's it's really important in terms of patient education as well. Yeah. Wonderful. Great. So I think with that, we have taken all questions which uh, came up on the chat. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Patricia, for spending your Sunday morning uh, with us from Latin America and uh, sharing your expertise with us on using corneal topography. No, I love it. I love it. And I hope to participate as, as soon as possible. Again, I love to be here with you and spend this Sunday with you in this beautiful country, Chile. You are all of you are invited. So I hope to see you in another opportunity and thank you and bless for you for this year. Thank you so much, Dr. Patricia. Today, until then, take care, be safe, and hope to see you in the next session. Bye bye. Thank you, Dr. Patricia. Have a safe flight. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. <laughs>